Seemingly forgotten by history, the Ufa rail disaster is one of the world's deadliest peacetime rail accidents. On June the 4th, 1989, more than 500 people lost their lives and over 800 were seriously injured when two packed tourist trains were caught in a huge explosion just outside of Asha, a small town in the southern central area of the Soviet Union. The accident happened on the same day that Chinese troops stormed the student protest in Tiananmen Square, and with the attention of the world's media focused on Beijing, the Ufa rail disaster was barely mentioned in the news, and has remained a forgotten tragedy ever since. The accident occurred on a stretch of the Goybyshev railway line between the towns of Ufa and Asha, near the southern end of the Ural Mountains in the region of Chelyabinsk. Due to poor maintenance practices, a liquefied gas pipeline which ran parallel to the railway lines had sprung a leak. Engineers in the closest monitoring station had noticed the fall in pressure, but instead of investigating the cause of the pressure drop, they had simply increased the flow through the pipe to push the pressure back up to normal. As the leak had occurred in a remote, sparsely populated area, nobody had been bothered to follow up on the pressure drop, and so the leak had not been fixed. The few people who had been in the area and who had complained of the smell of gas were ignored by the authorities. The butane gas, which was heavier than air, had been accumulating in the low valley for weeks. Unusually mild and windless weather had allowed the gas to form a huge cloud, with the railway tracks running right through the middle of it. This stretch of railway was mainly used by trains making the journey from the Siberian city of Novosibirsk to the Black Sea resort of Adler. A three-day journey, it was nonetheless very popular, and at this time of year the trains coming and going were packed with young families, soldiers on leave, and many young teenagers heading for the Soviet pioneers' youth camp on the Crimean coast. In the early hours of the morning of June the 4th, 1989, two passenger trains travelling in opposite directions entered the low-lying area where the gas had accumulated. The packed trains were carrying an estimated 1,300 passengers between them. The actual source of ignition is unknown, but it's thought that a spark from one of the train wheels ignited the gas causing the whole cloud to instantaneously combust. The ensuing explosion was enormous. The fireball was seen over a hundred kilometres away, and the force of the blast flattened trees for three kilometres around. The force of the blast has been estimated to be at around 10 kilotons of TNT, and by comparison, the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima was estimated to have a yield of about 12 kilotons. Of the 37 rail coaches, seven were destroyed so completely that they were reduced to fragments. The rest were torn, twisted, and thrown around like toys. The blast also set everything around on fire, eventually burning a ground area of over 250 hectares. Survivors of the blast were not only wounded and disorientated, they were in immediate danger of being burned alive in the wreckage, or caught in the now raging forest fire which surrounded the site of the explosion. The first responders came from the central gas substation. They did not know what they were heading towards. The reports were vague, they had no information about what to expect, and they just had to follow the glow of the fire in the darkness to find the site of the explosion. Many assumed it was just a pipeline rupture, and they had no idea of the carnage that awaited them. Tamara Striger was a nurse and an anaesthetist on the ER team and one of the first to arrive on scene. We arrived there as two ER brigades, a resuscitation and a cardiological one. The first thing we saw on site was three children, three teenagers. They were walking towards us like bats, their arms outstretched with flaps of skin hanging down from them. Upon arriving at the site of the wreckage, it became clear to the responders what had happened and the scale of the tragedy that they were facing. 
Bodies were lying everywhere in and around the site of the wreckage. Survivors, many of them children, were screaming in pain, and terribly burned passengers were stumbling around in shock. Many had run into the forest to escape the flames, and it took rescuers hours to find them. Of those who initially survived, many were so badly burned that their chances of survival were slim. The nurse Tamara Striga recalled one soldier called Donstov, who had been caught in the blast but had valiantly remained in the burning couch, helping as many people as he could escape through the broken windows. He had 85% of his body burned. He was doomed. When the explosion occurred, he fell off the top bunk and, as he said, he had only his watch left on him. The power of the blaze burned to everything instantly. That's how high the temperature was. He only asked to let his wife know that he wanted her to marry another man at some time. He did not want his little child to live without a father. He knew he wasn't going to make it. Over the next 12 hours, the survivors were transported to any and all available hospitals. Many went straight to the hospital in Ufa, the nearest city, whilst others were flown to Moscow for specialist treatment. The Soviet Premier Mikhail Gorbachev visited the scene of the accident, and he described it as a real hell on earth. Soviet troops were brought in to clear the wreckage and the bodies. Many of the soldiers were visibly distressed at the scene. Many bodies were burned beyond recognition, and removing these must have been a very grim task indeed. Dr. Svetlana Mazgutova, a volunteer worker who specialised in helping traumatised survivors, was flown to the hospital in Ufa. Even years later, she was able to vividly recall the scene. Everyone seemed filled with madness. Children ranging from 2 to 19 years of age were screaming, crying, shouting in hysteria, or running about frantically because of their pain and the difficulty in breathing. Over the next days, one out of every six children died in our arms. Official numbers vary. It's estimated that over 300 passengers died at the scene, with a further 275 deaths confirmed in hospital. The official figures are 575 killed, with over 800 injured, many seriously. However, as young children were not always counted on train manifests and overcrowding on trains was common, it's generally believed that the actual death toll was closer to 780. In the aftermath, several employees of the pipeline company were charged, although the sentences were light, the maximum sentences available being only five years in prison. A memorial stands today, close to the site of the accident, and an annual memorial service is held there. But to this day, despite the huge death toll, this tragedy remains mostly forgotten. If you were to ask someone, even in Russia, about the Ufa train disaster, most people would simply have no idea what you were talking about. <laughs>